Hey everybody, I'm Mark Walters of BigFanboy.com, and I'm sitting here with John Magaro. I want to make sure I'm saying your last You're name. You're saying Because right. yeah. it seems like one of those names that would be more complicated than it should be, but, you know, yeah, I just want to make yeah. sure. Yeah, so. yeah. A lot of people say Margo for some reason. Margo. I don't know how you get Margo from that. It's, you know. I really enjoyed The Big Short. I think this is one of those films that everybody should see it because, just for the simple fact that so many people don't really realize that these kinds of things happen. Mm -hmm. and, and it's... Uh, in some ways, I would I would almost call it like a horror movie in a way because it's so scary to know that this is what the banks can do yeah. with your money. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I, I think uh, saying it's a horror movie is, is not you know inappropriate. <laughs> it's a horror movie with uh, a sense of humor. Right. Um, but the, what happened was so outrageous, and uh, I think you should leave infuriated with what was going on. Um, but, but a little wiser, hopefully. But hopefully a little yeah. wiser. Yeah, hopefully a little wiser and, 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 you know, aware so you can try to prevent it from happening again. Yeah. Speaking of a sense of humor, uh, working with Adam McKay, and this is obviously a big departure for him from the kind of stuff we're used to seeing him do, yeah. uh, I, I think it's a very transformative uh, film for him as a director. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about, like, what he was able to bring to this and... Was it a little surprising when you found out that Adam was going to be the guy behind the camera on this thing? Um, you have the shirt uh, supporting so, Adam yeah, that's right, right. there. He that. Uh, <laughs> he's everywhere. He is everywhere. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a busy, busy man. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I knew that he was attached before I had read the script, and I hadn't read the book at that point, so I, I didn't really know what to expect. But reading the script, I mean, I saw his, you know, his humor in there. I saw his passion in there. Uh, and I was really excited to have the chance to work with him. I really love his films. I, I think he's made some of the best comedies of the last, uh, you know, decade. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really exciting to see him have the chance to sort of stretch on that and make uh, something that's a little bit more refined uh, and more dramatic, but still maintain that sense of humor. That yeah, it's he, smart. He, yeah, yeah, he has. Uh, yeah, he's, he's very quick and, and, and so witty. Um, I couldn't imagine anyone else directing it and, and bringing such life to this story. Yeah. yeah. In the film, you play Charlie Geller, and you and uh, Finn Whitrock, uh, you guys are kind of like, uh, I almost sort of liken it to something like like when Steve Jobs started Apple, like in a garage. Mm -hmm. It's very similar in, in, a, in a way. Like, you guys kind of come from these humble beginnings, but you get really big really fast. And uh, I, I imagine it's fun to play that kind of character that, you know, has that kind of success, but maybe still has that naivete about him to where, you know, they think they're playing in the big, le big leagues, right, but they're right. not really ready for yeah, the big Yeah, no, leagues. it was really exciting. I mean, <laughs> luckily it wasn't too much of a stretch for Finn and I because we're kind of <laughs> new to this too. Yeah. So we sort of fit in in, in our roles kind of nicely. Um, but, yeah, these guys, they, people would, you know, really <laughs> jokingly call them a garage band hedge fund. Absolutely. Because yeah. they were these guys who were not in New York, working out of the garage, trying to... Uh, to a hedge fund, and they thought they, you know, they were like, oh, we got $30 million here, we're, we're the real deal, but in the grand scheme compared to the other guys in this film, they were, you know, small, small potatoes, and uh, all they wanted was to be taken seriously, uh, to have a seat at the table, uh, and, and that, that I think was what was driving them, so it, it gave both Finn and I something really strong to play in the telling of it, that, that wanting to be taken seriously and sort of being blinded by that and not focusing on the consequences. It's not really until Brad's character comes and helps them out and, and lets them know that there, there are consequences to this. And you're one of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're one of three characters that does break the fourth wall and gets a chance to kind of talk to us for a second. Uh, and that's that's kind of an interesting, you know, it, throughout the film. It's not, it's not a hugely distracting thing, but it's a thing yeah. that happens. And uh, is that kind of a fun little twist to play when you're playing a character? Yeah, that? sure. I think, is it three of us? Is there I think there's three total because I think yeah. it's, I'm trying to think of who the third was, but I, I mean, obviously Finn Ryan. Finn does, Ryan yeah. does. Yeah, I think it's you I three. Do. Yeah. I think I think Christian does in a in a like in his character way. Like he looks at the camera yes, in this sort absolutely. of like knowing way, which I thought was really fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's kind of like, you know, I, I love Scorsese. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it is. It's very Scorsese, yeah. So it was sort of like a, a chance. You know, we even joked about it on set, you know, when I was doing it. He's like, hey, this just gets to be your Goodfellas moment. So it, <laughs> it was uh, kind of fun to, to have the chance to do that. Yeah. But it's also, you know, I, I thought it was really a cool way to tell the story, to have, that, you know, breaking the fourth wall, these little uh, vignettes of uh, celebrities coming in and explaining yeah. things. Um, it really, you know, helped keep the atmosphere light, and 
it was sort of nice to, you know, bring the audience kind of in on the joke and, 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 and be on the same side as the audience instead of being separate from them and, you know, we're telling our story and you can just sit there and watch it, but mm -hmm. instead, hopefully the audience feels involved and, and part of it as well, because we all went through this yeah. and we're all still feeling the effects of it. Sure. So, uh, you know, having the chance to include everyone, I think was a really, you know, inspired idea. Yeah. The last thing I'll ask you is uh, you guys pretty much spend the majority of your screen time working with Brad. Right. And I know you're working with Brad again on War Machine. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that guy like as, as kind of a scene partner uh, to work with? Is, does he, is he very, like, I, I mean, what, what's, I'm just curious, like, what his demeanor is working on set. He seems like, a, a, like he gets it, you know. Yeah, he yeah. does. I mean, he's as cool as, as you might imagine. Yeah. But he's just, uh, it, it's really so much fun to work across from him. He's always open, he's very relaxed, he loves to play around, loves to improv, comes up with fantastic ideas, and is always right there to support his fellow actor and make them look, look better than, than, you know, than you might look uh, on your own. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, he's really, he's really just uh, such a pleasure to work with. Well, I just want to say congratulations on this, and also congratulations on Carol. It's a Thank great you. movie. You've got, you it seem like you got a lot of cool stuff going on, man. So keep it going. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> Thank congratulations. You for everything. Yep. Pleasure. Yep. Pleasure. Yep.